hari bersubuh. Monday, the 13th of November 2023. Towards a stable future, President Wickremesinghe presents his second budget, proposing revenue collection measures and aiming at a budget deficit of 9.1% for 2024. Landmark proposal, steps to grant land ownership for estate dwellers after 230 years. 4 billion rupees proposed to be allocated. 14 years since, 2 billion rupees to meet needs of resettling internally displaced persons after 14 years of end of conflict. 500 million compensation for the missing. Election budget. Opposition accuses 2024 budget as one that meticulously targets elections. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labate the Hacker. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine with Indivadi Amuata. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. And a very warm welcome. You're joining us tonight on your English News Prime Time telecast on Other Than a 24. We take you straight to your top story. Sri Lanka's 78th annual budget was presented for year 2024 in Parliament today by President Ranil Wickma Singha in his capacity as Minister of Finance. Budget 2024 is Wickma Singha's second budget following his appointment last year. As per the budget, total expenditure for the year is estimated at 6.97 trillion rupees, while expected revenue is estimated at 4.12 trillion rupees. Government has set a budget deficit target of 2.85 trillion in 2024, higher than the upwardly revised 2.4 trillion rupees in the current year. President Wickremesinghe assured that the budget does not target elections next year, adding that the proposals aim at the future generations and building Sri Lanka's future. The 78th budget of Sri Lanka themed, a prelude to the stable future, was presented to the parliament this afternoon by President Ranil Wickremesinghe. Budget for the year 2024 is Vikram Singh's second budget following his appointment as the president last year. Mama Baragate, Apayak bought a patun rata, Pilipena, Hateragate, Adevati Tibuna Artica, Api Vida Badaka, Dushka, Maddi, Vidimata, Kromo, Salasma Katate, Vedakar and Patangata, Rata Mudua Garden, Veda Darua, Ape Mitra Ratwal Sial, Uparim, Apagana Soya Belua, Sahana Salasua, Yavasta, the Mam Prasidi, Uba Samatam Kia City, Paripuna, Patisanska, Vedapila, Coste, Artica, Ali Nagasi to Imeta, Artica, Apadukin, Janata. Bira Gani Mada, Mama Kapovi, Vesavi, Katu to Kana Bavai, Rata Kisiam, Stavra, Tweka, Patkaranta, then Apata Puluang Vilatino, Pilipan, Adevati, Tibun, Sri Lanka, Artike, Pasugi, Vasada, Kale, Tuli, Alit, Pila, Mata, Tabanta, then Apata Hakivi Tibino, then Napi Dirga Kalna, Tirasa, Piva, Katu to Kale, Pila Mata Tabu, Artike, Alit, Pili Mata Duo, and Haki, one ne evitai, Eka Lihisi Pasu Kariaknevi, Namut Apate Karana Puluang, Apa Me and Dushka, Mavate, Adi and Nadia, Idiri. Nobu Kalaki, Mitawada, Yahapa, Artika, Patisariak, Apata Anivari, Nirmane Krant, Puluan, Apayana Me, Mavata, Nivardiba, Pasugi, Vasara, Apasu, Hari Baladi, Sieta, Si Akma Sanatuin, Ape Salasum Nivardi, Ape Upai Marga Nivardi, Enisa, Maru Ingunat, Api Me Gaman, Itritika, Idriatam, Me Gamamaga Metek, Idriate, Yam Yam, Adupadukan Sidona, Evapa Handunagan Tieno, Apaita, Nietapanu, E Adupadusa, Verdi, Verdi Karaganta Kriakarno. 
උද්ධමන වේගය තනි ඉලක්කයක් දක්වා අඩු කරලීමට අපිට හැකි වුණ නිසා අධි උද්ධමනකාරී විනාශයෙන් රට ගලවා ගැනීමට අපිට පුළුවන් වුණා. නමුත් මේ දරුණු අර්බුදය නිසා ඉහළ ගිය ජීවන වේදමට ශරීරන පරිදි වැටුප්පා ආදෑම් වැඩි කර ගැනීමට අපිට තවමත් හැකි වී නැහැ. ඉන්ධන සහ විදුලි බිල තියුණ ලෙස ඉහළ යෑම සෑම පවුලකටම අනර්ථකාරී ලෙස බලපෑවා. බදු ඉහළ නැග්වීම නිසා තනි පුද්ගලයන් පමණක් නොව කුඩා ව්‍යාපාර සිට මහා පරිමාණ ව්‍යාපාර දක්වා තිගැස්සීමකට ලක් වී තියෙනවා. නිෂ්පාදන වියදම ඉහළ ගොස් තියෙනවා. රටේ ජනතාව විඳින මේ දුක් පීඩාව ගැන අප හොඳින්ම දන්නවා. තාවර සහ සංවර්ධිත ආර්ථිකයක් කරා යන ගමන සුන්දර නැහැ. දුෂ්කරයි, කටුකයි, අභියෝගාත්මකයි. බංකොළොත් රටක් යලි ප්‍රකෘතියට පත් කිරීම මහා දුෂ්කර වියායාම. මේ දුෂ්කර කාලය ගෙවා ගතහොත් අපට සහනදායි සුන්දර සමාජයක් නිර්මාණය කරගන්න පුළුවන් වෙනවා. සමහර කණ්ඩායම් පඩි වැඩි කරන්න කියලා උද්ඝෝෂණ කරනවා. මේ දවස්වල රජයේ සේවකයන්ට විතරක් නෙමෙයි මුළු රටම අමාරුයි. මේ දුෂ්කර තත්ත්වයෙන් ගොඩ එන්න අපි දවසින් දවස පියවරෙන් පියවර ඉදිරියට යා යුතුය. ඒ අසීරු ගමන වැඩ වර්ජන නිසා එක් පැත්තකින් ඉදිරි ගමන අඩාල වෙලා අනික් පැත්තෙන් රටේ බහුතර ජනතාව පීඩාවට පත් වෙනවා. පඩි වැඩි කිරීම හිතුමතේ කරන්න බෑ. රජයේ සේවකයන්ට පඩි ගෙවීම සඳහා රජයේ බදු ආදායම් 130ක් වැය වෙනවා. තවත් පැඩි වැඩි කරන්න නම් රජයේ ආදායම් වැඩි කරගන්න ඕනේ. රජයේ ආදායම් වැඩි කරගන්නේ නැතුව ඕනේ නම් පඩි වැඩි කරන්න පුළුවන්. ඒ කොහොමද? එක්ක සල්ලි අච්චු ගහන්න ඕනේ නැත්නම් පිට රටකින් ණය ගන්න ඕනේ. ඒක නැත්නම් අලුතෙන් බදු ගහන්න ඕනේ. එවැනි පියවර වලින් වෙන්නේ රට නැවතත් අගාධයට ඇද වැටීම. විදුලි බල මණ්ඩලයේ විදුලි උත්පාදනය සඳහා විශාල මුදලක් වැය කරනවා. මේ නිසා මහා පරිමාණ අඩු වියදම් පුනර්ජනීය බල ශක්ති ප්‍රදාන විදුලි ජාලයට එක් කිරීමට අවශ්‍ය සියලුම නීතිමය බාධක අපි ඉවත් කරා. අකාර්යක්ෂම විදුලි බල මණ්ඩලයේ වෙනුවට කාර්යක්ෂම ආයතනයක් ලෙස ප්‍රතිවිරෝධගත කිරීමේ නීති රීති දැන් සම්පාදනය වෙමින් පවතිනවා. විදුලි බල උත්පාදනය කාර්යක්ෂම ලෙස සිදු කළ හැකි ආයතනයකින් වෙනස්කම් සිදු කිරීමෙන් පසු ජනතාවගේ විදුලි බල මීට වඩා සැහැල්ලු වෙනවා. පාඩු ලබන රාජ්‍ය ව්‍යවසාය නිසා රටේ ජනතාව පීඩා විඳිනවා. ඒ වැය පාඩුව සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම දරන ජනතාව. ඒවා ජාතික සම්පත් කිය කියා තවදුරටත් ඒ වැය බර ජනතාව පිට පටවන දේශපාලන කණ්ඩායම් කරන්නේ රට ආපස්සට ඇදීම. ඒ වගේම දූෂණය හා වංචාව රට පුරා පිළිකාවක් සේ පැතිරලා රටේ ධනය හොරකම් කිරීම වැලැක්වීමෙන් පනත් අප දැන් ඉදිරිපත් කර තියෙනවා. සමහර දේශපාලන කණ්ඩායම් සාර්ථක ව්‍යාපාර ජනසතු කර මේ රටේ අනාගතය හොරකම් කළා. තවත් සමහරු තිරුකුණාමලේ තෙල් ටැංකි වැනි නිරපදාර නාස්ති වන තැන් වෙනත් රටකට බදු දීමට විරුද්ධ වී රටේ අනාගතය හොරකම් කළා. වරාය දියුණු කරන්නට විරුද්ධ වී අනාගතය හොරකම් කර. මේ ලැයිස්තුව තව දිගයි. මතක තියාගන්න ඒ ආයත් කරන්නේ හොරකමක්. ඒ නිසා රටේ අනාගත දියුණුව හොරකම් කරන්න එපා කියලා මම හැම එක්කෙනාගෙම ඉල්ලා සිටිනවා. අපි මෙතෙක් කල් ක්‍රියා කළේ රාජ්‍ය සම්පත් රැක ගැනීම කියන සටන් පාඨයට මුවා වෙලා. ඒන් ප්‍රයෝජනය නොගැනීම. ඒවා රට දරන්න බැරි තරම් බරක් බවට පත් කිරීම. හිතා බලන්න. මෙතෙක් අපේ රටේ ක්‍රියාත්මක වුණ දේශපාලන හා ආර්ථික සංකල්ප සාර්ථකයි. අරුණා කර ඒ බව තේරුම් ගන්න. රටේ මෙතෙක් පැවති දේශපාලන ක්‍රමයන් ආර්ථික ක්‍රමයත් සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම කනපිට හැරවිය යුති. අතීත අධ්‍යක්ෂි ගෝලීය ප්‍රවණතා අනාගත අභියෝග යන සියල්ල සලකා බලා අපටම අනන්‍ය ආර්ථික හා දේශපාලන ක්‍රමයක් අප නිර්මාණය කරගත යුති. නව සමාජ සම්මුතියක් සකසා ගත යුති. අපේ ආර්ථික ප්‍රකෘතිමත් වෙද්දි අපේ ආර්ථික ස්ථාවර වෙද්දි වඩාත් වැඩි පහසුකම් ජනතාවට සපයන්න අප කැප වෙනවා. නැවතත් විශ්ව 22 වසරේ අපේ රට හැද වැටුණු අපායට වැටෙන අපට බැහැ සමහර කණ්ඩායම් දිවාරෑ නොබලා උත්සාහ කරන්නේ නැවතත් රටේ තත්ත්වයට ඇද දමා ඔවුන්ගේ දේශපාලන අරමුණ ඉටුකර ගැනීමට හැබැයි අපට දේශපාලන අරමුණක් නැහැ අපට ඇති එකම අරමුණ රට ඉහළට ඔසවා තැබීම පමණ මේ අයවැය මැතිවරණ නායවයක් කියා සමහරු හඳුන්වනවා එහෙම හඳුන්වන්නේ ලබන අවුරුද්දේ ජනාධිපතිවරණයත් පාර්ලිමේන්තුවෙනත් පවත්වන නිසා හැබැයි මේ අයවැය වෙනස් මේ අයව රටේ අනාගතයේ නිර්මාණය කරන අයව වත්මන් ජාත්‍යන්තර ප්‍රවණතාවන්ට අනුකූල නව ආර්ථික ක්‍රමවේදයක් පදනම් දමන අයව මැතිවන ජයග්‍රහණයට වඩා මට වදගත් වන්නේ රටේ ජයග්‍රහණයයි රටත් රටේ අනාගතයේ ජය සැලසෙන යෝජනා ගණනාවක් මේ අයව ලේඛනයේ ඇතුල් කර තිබෙන ප්‍රශ්න ගණනාවක් මැද්දී වුවත් රටේ අනාගතය ශක්තිමත් කරන අයව ඉසිරිපත් කරන්න අපට පුළුවන් වුණා විපක්ෂයේ සමහර ආන් කණ්ඩායම් යෝජනා 
Nakarano, Paradi, Happy Anugamane, Kerneme, Piluata, Navata, the Mot, Siduan Nekuma, Esenatina, Piluata, Bada, Kota, Kada Parker, and the Mot, Siduan Nemokad, Jatantre, Muli, Aramudela, Sahayatu, Siduka, and Pati Sanskan, Mala, and Atueno, Emuna, Nai Protuka, Takirime, Mehuma, and Hitino, Visha, Puludui, Videsha Vinime, Desia Banku, Padieta, Padatheta, Galaima, Natareveno, Videsha Vinime, Hingavima, Samaga, Atta Shabande, Hingaveno, Viduli. Kapadu, Indian Hinge, Ali Tatueno, Badu Milat, Uddamena, Itagan, Berit Anamata, Yer and Agueno, Jatantra Mula, Aramudela, Vetasatana, Martumase, Anamutu, Anumatu, Dasita, Apata Yali, Labenta Patanga, Videshi, Mulia, Adam, Navateno, Yalit, Polianupati, Yella de Damamin, Deshi, Velendapola, Tavatawa, Nayaganima, Radiator Sid, Peno, Emma Unut, Api Navata, Arctic, Apaita, Lisa, Adavateno, Ape Arctic, Ali Kelin Karanta, Beri Andamata, Filipino, Matakatian, Apo Hemo Unot, Sri Lanka, Bera Ganim, Loke, Kisueku, Idripatene, Ekado Boyojanakaran, Ilanga Paraput, Apalabadi Ute, Ingano Rumak, Natinam, Tadamber, Himikamak, Itin Mame, Garusabave, Sielu Pashwangi, Illa Sitin, Rata Yali, Godanagwime, Radapilu, Equinalesai. Weakening fiscal policy. In keeping with the intention of raising government revenues, the budget proposes a total government revenue collection of 4.1 trillion rupees for the next year, up from 2.8 trillion rupees. 3.8 trillion of government revenue will be sourced through taxation. Admitting to failures in efforts to increase government revenue with several recent reform measures, the president proposed to establish a revenue authority to boost tax collection, considering international experience to increase effectiveness of revenue administration. A special penal provision is also proposed to be introduced to prosecute persons who have not submitted tax returns. As demonstrations and strikes raged across the country over the government's tax hikes, the president highlighted the need for improved tax administration and tax policy revisions in order to address the shortfalls in collection of tax revenue. Raja Badu Hila Damima Ganat Barapatal Vivechanatino. Badu Hila Damut Apata Sidune, Badu Yuak, Venaskidi Masa, Badu Patisaskana, Apakalia Tis no Salaka Hadia. Menisa Raja Muli Ancha Duru Aluna. Here Ali Shakti Matpa Hotagenam, Aniwarim, Badu Kami, Vyat Maka Venasak Sidukale. Sam Masa Kama Raja and Se Vatub Gavi Mata, Rupia Billion Anu Tunak Vaven. Asasuma Ausha the Vishram Vatu Padi Mahajan Subasadine Venue, Masaka Rupia Billion Tihak. A Samak Rupial billion this year we suck, Napolia gave him at a Vavin. May Karana Volt Pamanak, Vavin, a Masika Raja Vedama, Rupial billion a Tunsi Asutun. Dedas Visutuni, Palumi Masa Namiatula, Ape Masika Badua Dama, Rupial billion a Dedas Pahalo. Rupial billion Ekse Hatta Hatta Hinga, Hinga Pioan and Tavatawa, Nayagati Utueno. Metek me Hingamudal, Piava Gatte Komad, Videsh and Ayla Bagando. Lanka bank willing Aira Labagano, Mekram de King, Hingamudal, Piva Ganimata Baribu, with a mudal at Tugahan. Videsh and I put you got a karnatek, Apata Videsh Mudala, Videsh and I Labagata, Hakeita, Sima Saito. Isa Viseka Vasare, Rupia, Billiona, Namasia, Banku Aira Labagana Tibuna, and Banku Aira Labaganimata, Rupia, Billiona, Hattavak, Dakwa, Pahata Matamakata Genevit Tibeno, Navamaha Banku Panatano, Mudal at Tugahanta Bay, Menisa Raja Adam. Daladesha Nishpadine, Sieta, the highest Sieta, Sieta Pahalo Dakwa, Yeranangwa Gatte, Natnam, Api Navatat, Arctic, Apai Kat Advertin, Badu Adukiri Makalot, Venat Akarekin Tawat, Piravima Kaluti, Tamahara Kandam, Prakashakar Novak Mint, Sarala Sundara, Porunduling, May Prashna, Visane Nene, May Aurda Pilaka Karagana, the Raja Adam, Rupia, Billion Tunda, Sarasi Palo, May Dakwa Upayagin at Yadam, Rupia, Billion Deda. Sarasi at the Hyak, Miss Sampur and Gana to Payaganta Beh, Akian of Ilaka Gata Ada and Kudavaganta, Asamatula, a Karnat of a daddy lesser salakil at the Gatutu, Irakagat Raja Adam to Payaganimata Vesavieti, Alutem Badulipi Gonuak, Lia Padinchi Kernelis of Edi Ada Mati, Ayagin Upper Avasta Keeping Villa City, Namut Bautaria Kesekaline, Yet a Mulika Heto, Badu Gonuak, Utaki remain Pasu Nati Karadolita, Muna Denta Sidueta, Kiena Vistra. एक ऐतक बदुआय के लिए में संबंधिंग अनावश्य संकीर्णता तीनों समाहर निलंदारिंग के अनावश्य बालपैम वाले यातात्विंट सुधुएन अवस्था तीनों बदु के विम हिस्सरादियाँ वेन तारमटे समाहर गेवीम क्रम संकीर्ण है अपि बदु क्रम में 
ගන්නේ බරපතල අඩුපාඩු ගණනාවක් අප හඳුනාගෙන තියෙනවා වර්තමානයේ සමස්ත ඍජු බදු බර සමාජයේ සීමිත කොටසක් කීපයක් මත පැටවී තියෙනවා ආදායම් එකතු කිරීම මේ ක්‍රමවේදයෙනි කාලයක් තිස්සේ පවතින දුර්වලතා සහ නොසලකා හැරීම නිසා බදු පැහැර හැරීම සිදු වෙනවා මෙම අඩුපාඩු සකස් කර ගැනීමේ යෝජනා ගණනාව මේ අයවැට අප ඇතුළත් කර තියෙනවා මෙම යෝජනා එක රැයකින් ක්‍රියාත්මක කර හැකි නැහැ ඒවා ක්‍රමානුකූලව ක්‍රියාත්මක කළ යුතු එම යෝජනා ඔස්සේ රාජ්‍ය ආදායම් වැඩි කරගත් විට අපට අදට වදා බදු සහන ලබා දීමේ අවකාශය උදා වෙනවා රාජ්‍ය වියදම් අඩු කර ගැනීමෙන් ජනතාවගේ බදු බර අඩු කරන්නට පුළුවන් බව සමහරු පවතන නමුත් රාජ්‍ය වියදම් වලින් වැඩි ප්‍රතිශයක් එනම් 30%ක් වැය වන්නේ රාජ්‍ය සේවකයන්ගේ වැටුප් ගෙවීම අන්න රාජ්‍යාංශයේ ශ්‍රම බලකාය මිලියන 1.3යි සංඛ්‍යා වැඩි වුණත් අපට ඔවුන්ට රැකියා වලින් ඉවත් කිරීමට බෑ. එසේ කළොත් දැවැන්ත සමාජ අර්බෝධයක් නිර්මාණය වෙනවා. ඒ නිසා මෙම ගැටලු වලට ඊටා පරිස්සමින් සහ සංවේදීව අපි මුහුණ දිය යුතුයි. According to the proposed budget of 2024, the government expects to collect a total of 4.1 trillion rupees up from 2.8 trillion rupees in the previous year, which experts highlight as one of the largest ever increases of government revenue expectations in Sri Lanka. 3.8 trillion rupees of the total revenue of 4.1 trillion rupees are to be collected via taxes while the government estimates 2.2 trillion rupees of its tax collection to be sourced through taxes on goods and services. Meanwhile 1 trillion rupees are expected to be collected via income taxes. 505 billion rupees are estimated to be raised through taxes on external trade. On the total expenditure the government expects a total expenditure of 6.9 trillion rupees. According to the proposed budget for the next year, 5.2 trillion rupees of the total expenditure will be allocated to recurrent expenditure, while the remaining 1.7 trillion rupees will be allocated for capital expenditure. The proposed budget presented by the president in parliament today also contained measures to improve tax administration and tax policy revisions. Accordingly, under income taxes, the president proposed a special tax return requirement to be introduced for the deduction of a 2.5 withholding tax levied on the sales price of any gem sold at an auction conducted by the National Gems and Jewelry Authority. The proposal outlined that the exemptions under the Inland Revenue Act will be allowed subject to such return information. Furthermore, it was proposed that the withholding tax certificate issued by the withholding agent pursuant to section 87 of the Inland Revenue Act shall be issued without charge of a payment by the withholder. The speech also included proposals for a special penal provision to be introduced to prosecute persons who have not submitted tax returns and information required by tax officials. Meanwhile, the speech also highlighted that the documentary evidence called by tax officials during tax audits or administrative reviews but not submitted within a reasonable period of time will not be allowed to be submitted during the hearing at the Tax Appeal Commission. Proposals were also made to necessitate the submission of a copy of the certificate of taxpayer identification number to open up current accounts at any bank to obtain approval for building plan by the applicant to register motor vehicle or renew license by the owner to register land or title to a land by the buyer on the value added tax the proposals outline that a gazette notification will be issued to implement the increase of the vat rate with effect from the 1st of january 2024 Introducing tax administration measures for the excise department proposals were made to introduce an online license issuing system to provide customer friendly and efficient regulatory environment expeditiously Considering recent reports of counterfeit stickers circulating in the market the budget proposals made provisions to establish a committee to evaluate the security features and the security feature management systems The budget proposals made provisions to establish a committee to evaluate the security features and the security features management systems Further a new excise license system was also proposed The budget speech also stated that necessary amendments will be made to the respective provisions of the Inland Revenue Act number no. 24 of 2017, Value Added Tax Act number no. 14 of 2002, Finance Acts and Finance Amendment Acts, Social Security Contribution Levy Act number no. 25 of 2022, Telecommunication Levy Act number no. 21 of 2011, Tax Appeals Commission Act number no. 23 of 2011 in order to streamline the revenue administration and to rectify certain ambiguities and unintended effects. Meanwhile speaking to other than English news chief strategist of Capital Alliance Limited Udishan Jones highlighted that this budget intends to improve tax collection as opposed to raising tax rates The 2024 budget presented in the parliament today uh, is very optimistic in terms of revenue collection even amidst there being no major changes in terms of the overall tax rates hence the budget 
is aiming to improve overall tax collections rather than increasing tax rates as such. And if you look at the sources of where the government is looking at increasing tax collections, it's mainly from tax on goods and services, which is expected to, to increase of 859 billion rupees out of a total tax increase of 1.2 trillion. This will mean that the government is looking at increasing the collections from value-added tax and the social security levy, which are the two main contributors in terms of tax on goods and services. The 3% VAT increase which was proposed ahead of the budget is expected to add about 100 billion rupees which means that the government will have to look at an additional 750 billion rupees through reducing the threshold on VAT as well as increasing the number of files on VAT as well as completely taking away a lot of the VAT exemptions on even the basic products in the market. So except for healthcare, education and a few basic essentials, the exemption on VAT for most of the products are likely to be taken away in 2024, which will mean that certain products will see an increase in price levels, which will add to inflation in the coming year. In terms of increasing the overall tax collections, the government also will introduce the RAMIS system, which will electronically link the banking system, customs, the inland revenue as well as the vehicle registration department enabling to track transactions on an ongoing basis and to report them duly to the inland revenue. From an expense perspective, recurring expenses excluding interest is only expected to increase from 2.3 trillion to 2.6 trillion in 2024 which is a 15% increase and is mainly stemming from the cost of living allowance and pension cost increases to the government servants, which will cost roughly about 133 billion rupees in terms of overall expenditure. Uh, so from an overall expenditure perspective, the government is targeting the low in middle income population where they are looking at more handouts directly, as well as to the, the government employees and the pensioners in terms of giving them more leeway in terms of spending and improving their lifestyle conditions. Out of which a large part of the relief will go to the our summer pro, uh, welfare program to the low and middle income families. Also on the interest cost, interest cost is expected to increase from 2.2 trillion in 2023 to 2.7 trillion during 2024 and this is mainly because of recommencement of foreign debt repayment after the external debt restructuring is completed next year as well as large part of the loans being raised uh, at uh, discount rates which means that a lot of the maturity amounts will fall due in 2024. From a capex perspective the government is expected to increase its capital expenditure spending from 782 billion to 1.7 trillion during 2024. However, out of the 1.7 trillion, around 460 billion rupees is intended towards recapitalizing the two primary state banks and excluding the recapitalization of the state banks. The capex is only supposed to be about 1.25 trillion, up from about 800 billion last year. Also, they proposed that part of this recapitalization could also be funded by giving out a 20% ownership of the state-owned enterprises or the state-owned banks to strategic private sector partnerships. Overall, through the budget, Sri Lanka aims to achieve a primary surplus of roughly about 250 billion rupees, but overall budget deficit will still remain at 2.4 trillion rupees. However, from a GDP perspective, the budget deficit is supposed to reduce from 8.5% to 7.6% next year. However, this reduction in terms of deficit to GDP is factoring in a nominal GDP growth of 12%, uh, which seems excessive for Sri Lanka going into tight fiscal conditions in 2024. From our perspective, we feel that real growth will be only about 3% next year and inflation at about 5%. We expect nominal GDP can only grow at about 8-9% to when the government is projecting a 12% increase in nominal GDP next year. Via the budget 2024, President... Key proposals in President Ranil Wickrama Singha's 2024 budget aims to grant title ownership of lands to the estate community at over two, after over two centuries with a 4 billion rupee allocation for the purpose. 2 billion rupees will meanwhile be allocated to resettle those displaced due to the Northeast conflict 14 years after the cessation of hostilities. Meanwhile, 1 billion is proposed to be allocated to expedite the payment of compensation to families of the missing and victims of conflict. Government has also decided to allocate 8 billion rupees to formulate a national research policy to support the growing economy of Sri Lanka. 
Via the Budget 2024, President Ranil Vikramasinghe announced the increase of public sector salaries without affecting the fiscal balance. Highlighting that the government employees are currently receiving a cost of living allowance of 7,800 rupees, President Vikramasinghe proposed that their cost of living allowance to be increased to 17,800 rupees from 10,000 rupees with effect from January 2024. Meanwhile, the monthly cost of living allowance of public pensioners will also be increased from 2,500 rupees to 6,025 rupees. This increase will be implemented from April 2024. Under the Aspasima program, President proposed to increase the monthly allowance of 130,000 persons with disabilities and kidney patients by 50% from 5,000 to 7,500 rupees. The head of state also proposed the increase of the monthly allowance of 500,000 elderly people from 2,000 rupees to 3,000 rupees. The total allocation for Aswasima through the budget 2024 to persons with disabilities, kidney patients and the elderly will be 205 billion rupees. Meanwhile, a concessionary loan scheme of around 30 billion rupees will be introduced with the support of the Asian Development Bank in a bid to strengthen, encourage and facilitate small and medium scale enterprises. The total amount allocated for the development of SMEs will be 50 billion rupees, adding that a financial space worth of 250 billion rupees will be created. Through the budget 2024, President proposed to grant land ownership and build houses for the estate community and as an initial step, 4 billion rupees will be allocated. In the meantime, the decentralizing budget, which was halted due to the economic crisis in the country, was also proposed to be recommenced from next year. The President outlined that 11.25 billion rupees will be provided through the District Coordination Committees for the implementation of rural projects. In other budget proposals, the capital expenditure of the country will be raised by 1.26 trillion rupees, giving a high contribution to economic growth. The head of state said another 55 billion rupees will be allocated to recommence and complete the suspended projects in the country and to provide necessary provisions for the capital expenditure proposals. For higher education, a new technology university will be established in Kandy under the guidance of the IIT University in Chennai to expand opportunities in higher education sector for students in Sri Lanka. In addition, the government will take steps to establish four new universities which are Sitavaka Science and Technology University, Kurunagala Technology University under the Kotalavala Defence University, Management and Technology University and International University of Climate Change. 600 acres of land beyond the Kotmale Reservoir have been allocated to establish the International Climate Change University. Further rules and regulations will be adopted to convert NSBM, Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology, Horizon Campus and Royal Institute to become universities. President Vikramasinghe also proposed the allocation of 3 billion rupees to restructure the organizational structure related to information technology in the public sector to facilitate the digital economy by the year 2030 and to establish a technological innovation council and a national center for artificial intelligence. In a separate proposal, another allocation of 8 billion rupees has been made to formulate a national research policy based on research and development, technological advancement and innovation to promote economic growth and supporting economic progress and social well-being. Meanwhile, through Budget 2024, plans were set to develop a national supply policy with the aim of leveraging Sri Lanka's strategic locations and positioning the country as a supply and logistics hub. Strengthening land connectivity with India, President Vikramasinghe said the government expects to utilize the Colombo port to meet the supply needs of southwestern India and Trincomalee port to meet the supply needs of southeast India. He added this as the capacity of the Colombo port expects to be improved after the construction of the West Terminal and the expected Colombo North port after the year 2030 along with the developments of the Trincomalee port. In the meantime, 2 billion rupees have been allocated for the resettling program of people in the north and eastern provinces who lost houses during the war. An additional allocation of 500 million rupees will be made to ramp up the housing program and provide essential relief to the families who remain homeless. In another proposal, the government also decided to allocate 1.5 billion rupees from the budget 2024 for the development of school cricket and for providing necessary facilities for cricketers at the provincial level. Meanwhile, for the development of the transportation sector, the president said a multi-transport centre project will commence in January 2024 in Kandy, supported by a loan from the World Bank integrating trains, buses and other taxi services. Further, a pilot project of running 200 electric buses will jointly commence with the transport board in the western province. In the meantime, 2 billion rupees will be allocated for the basic construction activities of the Hingragur International Airport. With the budget restructuring process nearing its conclusion, the government expects to initiate the second phase of the Central Expressway. Accordingly, the section from Kadavata to Mirigama will commence with the assistance of China, while Sri Lanka will collaborate with Japan for the construction of the section from Kurunagala to Galagadara.
Commenting on the 2024 budget, the opposition Samarki Janabalavegya alleged that the budget was prepared targeting elections scheduled to be held next year. The view was also supported by the faction of the opposition led by independent parliamentarian Vasudeva Nanayakkara. However, parliamentarians representing government commend the budget, highlighting that it is practical and provides support for various sectors in the economy. ஏனி <laughs> Artike Paranitibunu Kramave de Venaswa, Alut Mawataka Autir Namgera, Travidika, Santos at Tieno, Bohumak Ilim Velati Burti Samitil, Visidak with a party with Matama Rajan, Shaki Haria Sadar Nine, Mel Rupial, the Halakel, Mangal, Mela, Raja, Prima, where to Pira de Mima Krajaka, Budimat Raja Sevaka, Media, Tanat Poko Balakin, Visas, Matam Pedilotin, Ayeva, Yodena, Narakeke and Beha, Namut Poitran Duro, Kriat Makavino, the Kin, Megita Sadani, Yodena. Anitik Hungaki, the Nava Tapi Rude in the Bay, Pay Raja Kale, Meva Exajati Kabashe, Baringware, Ginapu Yojana. Rabatilikaria, Kuka Thunder, Gudaki, Tianumi, and Agate and the Governor again. Eva Vinwin, Karana and Vietam, Avasha Vietam, Payagan Nunukoi, Kobadugan, Koyamatan, Nagan, Sativa, Yava, Yamarata Hadana, where the Pilak make at Latino, Ekadak Nang, Apihari Ramadanagata, Etamai, Enarude. Sande Mukada Ekata Las Vela Noe Kudeva Jana de Bativaria Duna. It disanatia Kerehi me arke gaman karan gata utsaha tirbopin. Have a prasne diene make a kriyan makaranda pulua. Taste a keepak, barapatala lesser, me artica, opatia tula, pedan and get a lacuna. A sealus estavel, the Sadar, the Kramavia, Kadalatina, Ungi, Jivika, and Amata, Labana Rudilla Patangan. To increase the salary of government servant by 10,000. First and foremost, you know 10,000 rupees is nothing at the cost of living in current context. At the same time, by taxing the entire public service and the private sector and the normal people, for just to pay the public servant a 10,000 rupees, I don't think that is been a very fair decision by the I think the president announced all the taxes earlier and now he is giving relief to the people now. But I don't think he has enough income to actually give relief what he has promised. Welcome back. The Colombo Stock Exchange closed in green today after the 2024 budget set ambitious revenue and deficit targets. The Colombo Stock Exchange All Share Price Index settled up 0.24% to end at 10,898.90. City Holdings PLC and Hatton National Bank PLC were the top gainers on the index, rising 10.12 and 4.79% respectively. Trading volume on the ASPI fell to 19.2 million shares from 25.3 million in the previous session. The S&P SL20 meanwhile jumped 0.1% to settle at 3,087.20. The equity market turnover fell to 558.7 million rupees from 1.02 billion in the previous session. Diversified financial sector was the top contributor to market turnover while food, beverage and tobacco sectors were the second highest. Foreign investors were net buyers purchasing stocks worth 18.3 million rupees while domestic investors were net sellers offloading shares worth 550.5 million rupees. And now we have Sajani Devapura from Capital Alliance on Markets in View.
We believe the market will gain clarity through the presentation of the 2024 budget which was announced earlier this afternoon with mainly highlighting procedures to bridge the gap between the government revenue and the government expenditure. Moving to the last week's Treasury Bill auction results, the government raised 158 billion rupees with rates slightly dropping across the board. The three months bill in particular fell 29 basis points to 15.6% compared to the previous auction. With regards to the current week, the government raised 50 billion rupees from the bond auction which was held today and the Treasury Bill auction will commence on Wednesday with the government expecting to collect 170 5 billion rupees. Now let's take a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day.